openness, transparency, and um, fully keeping the public. But it's a different audience. Um, I am doing on this program interviews with all the party leaders, including yourself. Anthony is trying to do interviews with all the party leaders. different audience. Well, like, he's, Everybody he's, else has done it. Why more, won't you? He couldn't have a more brilliant agent, if I may say so, than, than you. If, if you could cancelled it. Now, again, we are promised to vote next week. But can we trust that promise? And if Theresa May loses, what will she do next? Well, she's with me now. Theresa May, can I ask you first of all, can we rely on this vote act happening later this month? Definitely. What's happening in the rest of the world? Italy is in a particularly perilous position. It recorded its highest one-day death toll on Friday. 250 people died in 24 hours because they have seen a slowdown in the number of cases and may just be over the worst. How have they done it? I'm joined live from Seoul by South Korea's Foreign Minister, Gang Kyung Hwa. This uh, outbreak uh, from the very beginning with, you know, just full transparency and that's the way we've uh, won the public trust and support for this. Well, I think this is being faithful to the values of our very vibrant democracy, which is, which is uh, open and, and uh, you know, the government fully in the service of the people. Our economy depends on this interdependency with the outside world, so we want to keep the, the doors open with the other countries. And so as other, this disease spreads to many more countries, we are watching very closely. As governments, we also have to guard against panic. I think governments have to be cool-headed about this and do what we do based on, on evidence and, and science. Uh, because I think, you know, the declaration of the pandemic But first, let's turn to South Korea, because they have seen a slowdown in the number of cases and may just be over the worst. How have they done it? I'm joined live from Seoul by South Korea's Foreign Minister, Gang Kyung Hwa. Uh, Foreign Minister, thanks for joining us. Um, you have, as a country, adopted a yes, particular... Yes, thank you for having me, Mr. Mar. Thank you. You have adopted a particular strategy towards this. Just explain to us the basis of your strategy. Yes. Well, the basic principle is openness, transparency, and um, fully keeping the public informed. And I think uh, this is paying off. Um, we have a, a very good health care system to begin with. We have a system that is highly wired, as you can imagine. And fully utilizing that, we have dealt with this, uh, this uh, outbreak uh, from the very beginning with you know, just full transparency and that's the way we've um, won the public trust and support for this and as you say we are seeing a stabilizing trend uh, for three days in a row the number of newly uh, confirmed positive cases is smaller uh, than the number of those fully cured and released um, you've also got the most extraordinary testing system you're testing i think 20,000 people a day yes. which is far more than any other country of your size how have you managed to achieve this and why is testing central to what you're doing well first of all testing is central because that leads to early detection it minimizes further spread and it quickly treats those found uh, with the virus and i think that's the that's the key behind our very low uh, uh, fatality rate as well 
I think the, the, our system quickly approved um, the, uh, the testing system after the Chinese authorities released the uh, genetic sequence of the virus in mid-January, our health authorities quickly uh, uh, conferred with the, uh, the, uh, the research institutions here and, and then and shared that uh, result with the uh, pharmaceutical companies who then produced the reagent and the equipments needed for the testing. And so I think our testing is uh, nearly a quarter of a million at this point, at 20, 268,000 um, as of today. That's remarkable. Um, the other thing that you do, of course, is that you monitor people afterwards. You're not going into the same kind of lockdown, the social yes. exclusion that a lot of European countries are, but instead you're monitoring people by phone app. Mm -hmm. Again, can you explain why you're doing that and not closing down large chunks of your country? Well, I think this is being faithful to the values of our very vibrant democracy, which is which is uh, open and, and uh, you know, the government fully in the service of the people. And I have to say our public is very demanding and, requ you, know, did, you know, expects the highest standards from government services. And I think this is the key, the drive of our, of our, of our response to this. Um, you know, we are monitoring very closely the inbound traffic. We have also put in place vetting uh, of outbound traffic so that we minimize the risk coming in from the inbound traffic, but also make sure that we do our very best to contain the spread within country, but also taking steps to uh, vet those with possible symptoms among those who are leaving the country. The number of new cases is slowing down. Do you think you're over the worst now? Well, the peak of new cases was in late uh, February when we had a hit over 900 new confirmed cases. That has now come down to 76 new uh, cases as of today. So yes, we are definitely seeing uh, a normalizing trend, you know, reduction of new cases, but of course we're not complacent. This is not just about us, and we are taking this approach of openness and transparency, not just domestically, but to the international community because we are a country that is highly interdependent with the rest of the world. Our people tra uh, travel a great deal on, on businesses, on family visits, on, on tourism. Uh, our economy depends on this interdependency with the outside world, so we want to keep the, the doors open with the other countries. And so as other, this disease spreads to many more countries, we are watching very closely and we are committed to maintaining our open approach it may not be applicable in other countries with you know, less IT infrastructure and other values, but uh, I think in the end we have to acknowledge that this is not going to be the last time a novel pathogen uh, becomes a global health threat. So we hope that our experience and, and our approach and model uh, informs uh, other countries dealing with this, this um, corona COVID-19, but also um, you know, leading to greater international collaboration for better preparedness uh, when this comes around the next time. As it will, in your view. This is not the end of, uh, even if you get through this, it's not the end of the episode, it's the beginning of a new way of living, almost. Yes. One thing I also would like to point out, as governments, we also have to guard against panic. I think governments have to be cool-headed about this and do what we do based on, on evidence and, and science. Uh, because I think you know, the declaration of the pandemic uh, by the WHO um, risks you know, turning the spread of the virus into a spread of, of fear and, and phobia. I can't tell you how many incidents uh, I get uh, reports of Asians, not just Koreans, but being verbally abused even physically attacked in other countries and, and this governments have to take responsibility to stop this kind of incident because that is not helpful to to generating the spirit of collaboration that we Indeed. absolutely need to overcome this uh, challenge mm -hmm. together globally. Yeah.